A cordial greeting. Today is Monday, June 10, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. The Atlantic hurricane season began 10 days ago, and so far no tropical cyclones have formed. In fact, this is the slowest starting season in the last 10 years. But be careful, this does not mean that the hurricane season will not be active. Remember, we are anticipating a hyperactive season due to the expected development of La Nina in the Pacific and the continued extremely high sea surface temperatures in the tropical Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, and Gulf of Mexico for this time of year. The combination of these two factors should allow for extraordinary cyclonic activity, and at some point, we will see the formation of several cyclones, probably closer to the peak of the season, which is between August, September, and October. However, over the next few days, we will be monitoring two areas. First, the southeast of the United States, and secondly and more importantly, the southern Gulf of Mexico and the Bay of Campeche. As we have been warning for a few weeks, a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation is moving over the eastern Pacific region and the western Caribbean Sea, where a Central American gyre is gradually developing. This is why we have seen a considerable increase in humidity and rains across this area, where some flooding may be reported over the next 7 to 14 days, as well as an extreme rainfall event approaching the state of Florida and affecting it for the rest of the week. This is a very complex weather pattern involving the Central American Gyre, a trough system located over the southeastern United States, and some tropical waves that have moved over this region, creating a broad zone of rain and where several low-pressure systems should develop over the next few days. In the following image, you can see the favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which is now located over the Central America region and, according to projections, should remain in this area at least until the end of June. Eventually, in July, when this energy moves over the African continent, it is possible that favorable conditions for the formation of strong tropical waves will also be generated. But for now, let's focus on the region south of Chiapas in Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico, where we are beginning to see a trend that possibly next week we will have the development of a low-pressure system that could find favorable conditions for some cyclonic formation. Before talking about projections and global models, I wanted you to see the accumulated rainfall expected over the next seven days for parts of Central America and Southern Mexico. It is projected that between 200 to 400 millimeters of accumulated rain may fall over Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize, El Salvador, Guatemala, Campeche, Quintana Roo, Yucatan, Tabasco, and Veracruz. These rains can cause flooding and landslides during the rest of the week and early next week, so be very cautious if you live in these areas. As I mentioned last week, the Climate Prediction Center has marked this area as one where we might see a low-pressure system with development probabilities. This includes the regions south of Guatemala and El Salvador, as well as areas south of the states of Oaxaca and Chiapas, and also the Western Caribbean Sea and the Bay of Campeche. This projection is from June 12 to 18, although at the moment the probability of development remains quite low. Before continuing with the model projections, I wanted to remind you that it is important to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the red button below that says subscribe. Then click on the bell so you don't miss any of the videos I will record during this hurricane season. Let's first look at the projection of the American model, the GFS, where we will see the interaction of several atmospheric disturbances and where several low-pressure systems can be generated. For example, towards the southeast of North Carolina and South Carolina, the GFS model is projecting the development of a low-pressure system in the afternoon and evening of Friday. We also see the Central American gyre strengthening over Central America and Southern Mexico, and some low pressures in the Bay of Campeche and the Western Caribbean Sea. By the weekend, the GFS model moves the low-pressure system to the southeast of the United States over open Atlantic waters without causing major inconveniences. But we continue to see a lot of instability and low pressures in the Gulf of Mexico, particularly for the beginning of next week. The GFS model is developing a defined low-pressure system in the Bay of Campeche. Although this is a long-term projection and typically we do not pay much attention to projections more than five days out, in this case, we are seeing some consensus in the models. For example, here we see the projection of the European model which like the GFS model develops a low pressure towards the southeast of the United States. It is possible that in this area there is also a low probability of cyclonic development. Then from the beginning of next week, the European model starts to lower pressures in the Bay of Campeche, and eventually for the beginning of next week. Like the GFS model, it also develops a low pressure system in the Bay of Campeche just east of the states of Veracruz and Tamaulipas. The fact that these two models show the same thing is something that catches our attention, 
and we will be attentive to see how these projections evolve. Additionally, other models like the German model also have low pressures in this area for the weekend. Also, look at the other area to the southeast of the United States developing a fairly defined low pressure. We will see if this also manages to have some possibility of cyclonic development. The Canadian model also develops a defined low pressure system for next week, and the UK model also has a low pressure in the Bay of Campeche for early next week. Today we do have some consistency in the models in that first, we will be observing the region towards the southeast of the United States, although any low pressure that develops in this area will probably have a trajectory over open Atlantic waters. But of greater interest to us, we are very attentive to the Caribbean region, the Gulf of Mexico, especially residents living in the states of Veracruz and Tamaulipas, as there is the possibility of the development of a fairly defined low pressure in this area. However, it is very preliminary to know exactly if the first cyclone of the season will finally develop in this area, and even less can we talk about its trajectory. This is because it is a long-term projection. And also remember that cyclonic development associated with the Central American gyre is extremely difficult to forecast. To give you an idea, look at the set of GFS model members where there is definitely no consensus on where this low pressure could develop, much less what its future trajectory would be. Additionally, the set of European model members also shows different scenarios, which again I repeat is an extremely difficult forecast, and at the moment it is impossible to know exactly how this low pressure will evolve. But do see that the set of European model members currently has over a 50% chance of developing a tropical depression in the Bay of Campeche for early next week. Our early month projections are starting to take shape, and I understand that over the next few days, if this trend continues, the National Hurricane Center should be marking this area as a zone with cyclonic development possibilities. If so, they will probably do so by the end of this week or the beginning of next week. Well, that's all for this video. I will continue closely monitoring this area in the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Eastern Pacific. Before leaving, I wanted to mention that tomorrow the University of Colorado will be updating its forecast for this hurricane season. So tomorrow, I will record a new video to talk about that forecast and the projections of other models that have come out in recent days and that are not very encouraging for the Atlantic and Caribbean region. Also, remember that we continue with our sponsorship plan, where with a small monthly contribution you can help this project and receive some additional benefits. If you are interested, click on the blue button below the video that says join. Any help to this project will be welcome. Now, I say goodbye, until tomorrow.